one. So before we begin the oral presentation, I will be remiss if I didn't acknowledge the hardworking staff and coaches of the Department of Athletics and Physical Education.
There are two main reasons why that 2014 became the GSAC champions. First, we had four unbelievable coaches who constantly pushed us on and off the field, as well as believed in us with everything that we did. Secondly, our team was composed of 13 players who believed in each other, pushed each other, and became one big family on and off the field. Number 23, Amy, our left fielder, our tallest and fastest player who used her speed to track down balls in the outfield and steal around the bases to get us run. She still holds the school records for stolen bases, runs scored, triples, and hits. Uh, number nine, our, Alyssa, our center coach, one of the ones with the biggest hearts and always put 100% ball on the field, demonstrated by her game-saving dive and catch and that became the norm for us. Number eight, Aaliyah, our pitcher and utility player. She was relentless and powerful at the plate and still holds three season records in total bases, RBIs, doubles, and home runs. A quiet leader on the team, but always performing at her best. Number four, Ashley, our first baseman, a vocal leader, intense gamer, hard worker, and spark that moved the team to be the best each and every day. Ashley shares the record for season triples with her teammates. Number 16, Casey, our pitcher and second baseman, tiny but mighty. She's like this one. <laughs> she had more power than what appeared, driving in many of our runs and left back her speech with her exception, exceptionally deceptive changeup. Number six, Holly, pitcher and outfielder, the player who played the game with the love she had for it as a child. She was a reminder how fun the game can really be. She still holds the Agnes Scott season record for the lowest ERA at 2.66 and the best fielding percentage. And number 14, Julia, our pitcher and utility player, provided so much depth to the team she could play any position, was a strong batter and average in power, and gave us many strong innings on the mound.
51 blocks, 190 steals, and she was also named to the GSAC All Conference team. Now, Jennifer and I go way back, way before Adam Scott, way back to elementary school. We both attended a small college school over in Fort Park, Georgia, and it's been an honor to not only recruit Jennifer to come play with my alma mater, but see her grow into the young woman that she is today. So it's been a greater honor to be here for this full circle moment and present to you one of the greatest basketball players in Agnes Scott history and my Scotty sister, Jennifer Sapata.
will present the inductee for cross country. So here we introduce the honoree is Cecilia Moore, cross country.
walk back on here, it's just overwhelming. Uh, the memories, the people, just, I love being here. I love every aspect of Agnes Scott. It has truly changed my life. Uh, when I, I've been playing softball since I was a little girl. Uh, two older brothers run around the field with them. I think I was born on a Thursday at the field on Saturday. <laughs> so it's just always been a constant in my life. And at some point, those fun running around bases with my ruffled socks and my polka dot shorts and all of that, at some point that shifted and it became more serious. And it became more, oh, I could actually do something with this, maybe. Um, and then I was recruited, and I immediately said I'm not going to an all-girls college, or all-girls school is what I said. <laughs> um, well, I was definitely humbled with that, because this school changed my life. Um, softball, most of my teammates are sitting right over there. I wasn't a part of that 2014 team, um, but I did have the pleasure of being able to play with most of them. And we had our ups and downs, for sure. Uh, but we worked hard, and I'm just so thankful for my teammates. Um, in the 20 plus years that I've played, there's been two constants, and it's the support of my mom and my dad. They are here tonight. Um, they, yes, they can applaud. They can applaud. <laughs> As a child softball, softball player, I went all over the country, California, Wisconsin, literally all over the place, they were there with me. They were always Melanie's parents. I would not be here if it were not for my mom and my dad. They gave me and still give me more than just being an athlete. It's more about being a good person. And it's how you treat people. It's when those teammates that you don't get along with, those coaches you don't get along with, you're not just gonna quit. You're gonna, you're gonna stick it out and you're gonna do it because that's that's what winners do. We don't quit. So it's because of my parents that I'm standing here today to support uh, my mom and my dad, my family. Um, I wouldn't be here without them. So true thank you to them. Um, I'm obsessed with them. I love them so much. And I don't know what I would do without them. So this honor really, I, they deserve it. <laughs> you know, they got me here. So um, thank you everyone for putting this on, for having us and the delicious food and just for the smiling face that it truly is an honor. So thank you very much. Thank you, Melanie. All right, uh, our next honoree actually lives in Switzerland and uh, couldn't make the trip. Uh, I'm not sure why not. <laughs> uh, but even though she couldn't be with us tonight, we definitely want to honor her achievements uh, in tennis. And here to present our inductee is tennis student athlete and presidential scholar, Brandy Nalyanya. Brandy. Thank you for having me, Robert, and uh, Mark 
chef. Uh, I'm really, you know, speechless about this, um, this event, and uh, I really appreciate it, and I, I, um, I'm really, yeah, I'm really surprised as well, because it's like, I don't know, 20 years later, here we go, old memories come back, and um, I feel really honored, and um, I feel honored that I have these great memories about um, the team at the time, about um, Coach Aminadis, uh, who was his first year coach at Amistad at the time, and um, it was really exciting, and uh, it brought back all these great memories that I went um, and, and found this folder, actually. So this is a really old folder of this stuff. So, and I got, basically, this folder presents all the emails and writings that I, I received at the time. So you can see how many people had written and congratulate our team, me personally, and um, it really meant so much to me, and um, I'm blessed with these memories, and um, I'm really happy about that. Let me show you uh, two pictures, I just fell uh, off the folder, one sec. Oh. This was um, Coach Anagadis at the time, and this is me. <laughs> and this is one of the memory, memorable pictures uh, and part of the team training. So, uh, very nice. Yeah. I really, uh, it was one of the best times of my life. Coach, coach administrator, and uh, the athletic advisory board thought it was very important to create this category because these are the people that are so instrumental in the student athletes' lives. So, uh, our next recognition is the honoree for coach administrator who have made a significant impact on Sky Athletics. And here to introduce the inductee is Gay Purdue. Hudson, Dean of, of Students of Meritai and former Vice President. Okay. And she had eight teams 
was who made nationals while she was here. She was the woman who coined swap, Scotty women, smart women swept. I mean, which is, was a transforming kind of slogan for us. But what Jolene has, which embodies Agnes Scott, is that sense of excellence. It had to be done right. And she also knew that in order to do it right, she needed resources. And I was the woman she would come to to say, okay, I've got to have more money. We just can't, we've got to do it this way. And she was the best salesperson of athletics I ever met. But it was that passion for excellence that made her so good. And she translated that into everything associated with Agnes Scott Athletics. I was very humbled to work with her. She taught me a lot. Uh, one of the things she asked folks to do when she was here was to be a guest coach. You know, so I'm thinking, how hard can that be? So I said, I signed up one night. I'm going to be a guest coach with the basketball team. I mean, you sit on the bench, you know. Afterwards, I need a support group. This woman <laughs> is one intense coach. Do not, don't, don't volunteer to do anything with her unless you've got a really strong spine. But seriously, Jolene, I do think of you as the founding mother of Agnes Sky Athletics. Without your vision, your spirit, and that passion for excellence, we wouldn't be here tonight. I thank you, and we all thank you.
So thank you, Gabe. And I will say I'm pretty sure Gabe got many phone calls from parents saying, what in the world did you hire? But you know what? I think she probably just listened. She let him find Mad Mountain and let him come back down. So, Art Brandon, I mentioned your name. <coughs> I'm going to mention it again. The generosity that you've given athletics over the years is, I don't, I don't think anyone's imagined that um, someone like you would be able, would want to give like you have. What started with a simple phone call, I called Art up one day and I said, hey, let me ask you a question. You know, because I knew he was into like commercial development or something, which to me that means you develop things. So I was like, hey, we need a new locker room, we need a locker room renovated. What do you think about doing that? What do you think, Art? He said, well, that's interesting. Let me come down and take a look. And I kid you not, our locker room was about a seventh grade middle school locker room with a lot of lockers, not really any showers. They were communal showers. It was just not something that you wanted to bring your foods to. So I brought him in there. He started making sketches. And he went back to his place, uh, place of business, and then he called me up and he said, you know, I think I can make this work. And what's amazing with that, y'all, is the fact that Art's a graduate of Georgia Tech. I don't think you dated Magna Scotty. Aggie, uh, Scotty, did you when you were? No, I mean, he just just fell in love with Magna Scott and our student athletes. And what was amazing, the transformation that he gave to that locker room helped us, help the athletic department secure 40 new incoming first year student athletes that would not have come to Agnes Scott if it wasn't because of that. So let's give a big round of applause. Yeah. Yeah. I believe you still made a big pledge right after I left Agnes Scott. And uh, he's just a generous man that, that loves the Scotties. So we're teachers. You just become best friends with him, okay? All right, there we go. <laughs> Bernie Smith. Oh, man. I, you know, it's kind of a love-hate relationship. I love her and her daughter, and her daughter probably hated me. Her daughter played basketball. So, Bernie, um, you have been just a godsend to the athletic department, to the school. I know you graduated from Agnes Scott, but the amount of time, effort, and financial resources you get to go back to Scott, and especially athletics, it, you can't replace it. And, you know, her daughter, I just have to tell you a recruiting story real quick about Morgan. As y'all know, Morgan played for me for two years. And when Morgan and Taylor came for her re recruiting visit, my assistant coach, David Egan, was kind of showing them around and stuff. And when they left, I asked David, so how do you think it went? Do you think they'll come? He goes, no, they are not going to come here. He said, we were sitting there and they were rolling their eyes and they acted like they didn't really want to be there. And lo and behold, Bernie, I don't know what you said Morgan, but we got, we landed a phenomenal basketball player in Oregon State. 6-1. You don't get many 6-1 women's basketball players, especially at a women's college. And Morgan went on to be a phenomenal player. Not quite to Jennifer's level, but she was definitely a phenomenal player. And I love coaching her. And uh, Cliff and Bernie, no matter what I did, no matter what I said, no matter how hard I throw those two athletes, they were very supportive. And thank you very much. Coach Curry, you and Carolyn, thank you for agreeing to serve on the Athletic Advisory Board. Thank you for all you've done for Agnes Scott, especially for the Athletic Department. And thank you for continuing to make your life shine. To the former student athletes, coaches, staff members, admissions office, uh, which is now enrollment services, um, athletic trainers, my former fa faculty athletic reps, anyone that worked with me for 13 years, thank you. Uh, it was it was an amazing place to be. I'll never forget the time that I had here. But most importantly, say the best for last. I want to thank my family. My husband, Charles, he must stand up.
My daughter, Bobby. Bobby, stand up. And my son, Ryan, who is standing up. Come on, up here. Come on. So, talk, uh, if any of you know me, which some of you do, some of you don't, just know that the good Lord knew what I needed when I met Charles Aiken. Because God bless him. Can you imagine being married to me? Or me being your mother? Glory, glory. Um, he has been my rock. He has been my shield. When I would be, pardon my language, pissed off at the basketball team because they weren't working hard, and I'd get ready to go into halftime, and he knew I was about to lay in him, he'd say, Honey, you need to calm down. <laughs> and I would go, I'm calm! He has been amazing. To my daughter Bobby, she's a freshman at Kentucky, pursuing a dual degree in dance and integrated strategic communications. She grew up on this campus, y'all. She was four months old when I came. And uh, my son Ryan, who's over there, I guess filming, um, he grew up on this campus as well. My kids thought that they ran the athletic department. They thought they owned the college. I mean, they, they were bomb.com when it came to Agnes Scott. And they were, although they accepted the fact when I told them I was going to go to Georgia Tech, they understood. They loved this place. Agnes Scott made me a better wife, a better person, better mother, I think, and an administrator. This place gave me the tools necessary to assume my current role at Georgia Tech as Senior Associate Athletic Director and Senior Woman Administrator. And I will forever be grateful. Before I leave tonight, though, I want to share a quote from Nelson Mandela, who was the former president <laughs> of South Africa. And his quote, he said, sport has the power to change the world. It has the power to inspire. It has the power to unite people in a way that little else does. Thank you.
leisure in the women's suffrage movement. She also established and to this day uh, runs uh, a not-for-profit organization called Women Alone Together, which helps women to connect, communicate, and it helps them to become more educated by offering all kinds of different programs. And as a matter of fact, Carolyn received the college's uh, Outstanding Alumni Award for her work in founding and running this organization. Okay, that's what Carolyn and Bill had few of the things that they had done for the community. But what we're here to talk about today is about what they have done for Agnes Scott, specifically Agnes Scott Athletics. They have provided so much wonderful information that has raised the level of Agnes Scott sports dramatically over the last five years that we've all been together on the Athletic Advisory Board. And because of their wisdom and their leadership on the Athletic Advisory Board, I am just thrilled to ask Carolyn Bill to join the inaugural class of our Athletics Hall of Fame at Athletics College. Georgia Tech. 
as a place to go to college. I said, yes, ma'am. She said, don't. <laughs> I said, don't what? She said, don't consider Georgia Tech. I said, why? She said, Bill, you're not a stupid boy, but you have frolicked all the way through high school. You wouldn't have survived two semesters at Georgia Tech. They have national merit scholars. They take chemistry, they take calculus. And so I thanked her, excused myself, went down to the library and looked up the word frolic. <laughs> she was right. I was from a family of flat out, pure Georgia Bulldogs. My father was born on the campus in Athens, graduated from the university, and I grew up in red and white. However, I had gotten a hold of the map, and I discovered that Athens was not the closest campus to Agnes Scott College. <laughs> I wasn't going any farther than I had to from the most beautiful and the brightest human being I had ever known. On December 15th, We'll celebrate our 59th wedding anniversary. <laughs> Carolyn frequently cites Agnes Scott and the marvelous instructors she had as being one of the main reasons for the excellence of her life. She is the most dedicated, the most tenacious, the best worker hardest worker I've ever known. And that's how you do PhDs, and that's how you do foundations for women, and that's how you're supposed to do everything. And I love her with all my heart, and I'm so proud to be a small part of this legacy. And I don't have any illusions about where we, we certainly wouldn't be standing here if it weren't for Dr. Carolyn Newton Curry. So, <laughs> She also learned about teamwork 
especially Magna Scott, where she was working with a very diverse team of individuals who just helped her a lot in her subsequent career. And then finally she learned about leadership. She was captain of the basketball team for two years, probably, I can't remember. And anyway, she really helped working with the athletic staff and with the team to develop and determine and solve some very big issues that had come up. And so I think all of these qualities allowed her to move into a very successful career. She went on to get her MBA, and then she's been working, she's worked in three different banks over the last few years, and now she's a vice president at Northern Trust. And so I think that that inspired me when Jolene asked me to do it, to, uh, oh, and one thing I've got to say about Morgan, uh, she didn't come to Agnes Scott because of me. Had, as a matter of fact, that was not, that was a detriment, not an advantage for her. <laughs> but she, because of this lady's relentless recruiting, <laughs> like calls every day, I just, she just wouldn't let it drop. And I remember looking after we were the, uh, a uh, acceptance uh, thing for registered students at Mary Day University. After about 20 minutes, she said, Mom, let's get out of here. Her sister was with us too, her twin sister Taylor. And, and Taylor and I jumped and said, Are you sure you're on the way? And she said, Yeah, yeah. And we walked outside the door and she said, You know, I don't want to go somewhere where everybody knows my name. <laughs> and she, so she called Jolene that moment, standing in front of the university, and said, Jolene, I'm going to come there. Jolene started screaming and ended up, she was in a softball game, and all the basketball team was there, so she passed the phone down to all the best. Anyway, everybody knew her name. So that was great. But anyway, so that's why I said yes when she asked me to develop this. Uh, and uh, as Jolene said, she left shortly thereafter. <laughs> so she left us holding the bag. But our group has just evolved so beautifully along with the beautiful evolution of the athletics in the sky. It's been wonderful. We've been able to perhaps provide a little bit of guidance, a lot of support, and just have fun in the process of doing it, learning a lot about athletics and meeting some of the most wonderful athletes that are there. And so uh, I think Jolene, as Gay says, is the mother of athletics at Agnes Scott. And I just wanted to tell you that this lady here, Markeisha, is incredible. She is, I mean, who knew that she was an event organizer on top of being an organizer of athletes? I mean, it was just very relieved that she did not do it. And so uh, with that, I'd like to turn it over to Markeisha to make a few final remarks. Wow, this is outstanding. This has been a really, really outstanding night. And I'm just really grateful and humbled that we made it to this point. Um, and this is the first of many Hall of Fames that I hope uh, will take place on our college campus. I want to thank everyone um, behind the scenes and in front of the scenes <laughs> to uh, really make this event possible. To really, as I said, to inspire our student athletes. Uh, tomorrow, we'll have the opportunity at 11 o'clock a.m. in the lobby of Woodruff Athletic Complex to view the unveiling of our brand new Hall of Fame display that was erected just for this occasion that will solidify your place in Agnes Scott history forever. So we're so happy. So hopefully you all will join us tomorrow at 11 o'clock in the lobby of Woodruff for that occasion. I want to also uh, thank my family and friends, um, especially my husband, Derek Henderson, on embarrassing call on the scene. Derek Henderson. He put on a bow tie just to take pictures of you today. Thank you. Uh, without having a strong family support, taking a job like this, Jolene knows it's just not possible. It's just not possible. So um, I'm grateful for my family. I'm grateful for my friends who really support the Scotties. I've made Scotty fans out of my entire family. My grandma watches the live stream games on the phone. She yells at those Scotties and grateful that um, she'll be able to join war games in person. 
I also want to thank Bernie and Naima for all of the support that they've given, not just for this event, but from the very beginning, from my first day at Abbey Stock College. I, I got here just in time for a pandemic, by the way. I started <laughs> January 2020. Like, oh, yay, Abbey Scott. Oh, no, all sports are canceled. So uh, I want to thank Bernie and Naima. I always say Bernie is my first friend <laughs> at Abbey Scott um, because coming to a campus where everyone shortly thereafter started working remotely, I didn't know anybody. I met everybody on Zoom for the most part. I hired most of my staff on Zoom for the most part. So um, just really grateful for all of the support that you've given me and all of the hard work that you do rallying the truth to get things done on behalf of our students. It's very much appreciated. And for all who came out today to support these wonderful honorees who have left a tremendous legacy. So in close, well before I close, we have those uh, basket winners. <coughs> Paula Colbert, you are the winner of the golf classic basket. Mrs. <laughs> Hines, she'll be back tomorrow. She won the game day basket. <laughs> and I think it's rigged, but Naima Judge, you won coffee. <laughs> All of our honorees today, please thank you. <laughs> On behalf of our president, we thank the Aggie Scott Athletic Advisory Board, the Department of Athletics. I welcome and declare that today, November 5th, 2021, you are duly inducted into the Agnes Scott Athletics Hall of Fame. Congratulations. Thank you so much for your time. This is our program. I want to be saying thank you so much. I'll see you tomorrow at 11. And definitely looking forward to having you back next week. Thank you. Thank you.